Hi everyone, and welcome to my channel. If this is your first time seeing my face, hi, I'm Jalisa, your friendly neighborhood lawyer. <laughs> and welcome to the first episode of our brand new spanking series called Alien in the Courtroom. In this series, we aim at helping young professionals, young entrepreneurs in making better legal decisions for their brand. Really just wanted to go ahead and make these videos where I combine my two interests, particularly fashion and the law, and things that I think that young entrepreneurs out there need to know so that they can make better choices when it comes to building their brand in general. So for today's video, it's just gonna be a little bit of an introduction covering the differences between trademark law, copyright law, and patent law. I noticed that these are terms people often use interchangeably, terms that people use wrong, and I definitely used them wrong before going to law school myself. So I just wanna make sure that we have these terms cleared up before we move on to any of the meteor topics of this series. And the topics are going to be good, so you wanna stay tuned. But first, let's clear up some common misconceptions about trademark law, copyright law, and patent law. Again, it's important that I stress that these videos are intended for educational purposes only. In no way and should you consider me to be your own lawyer. And if you find that you have questions that are more specific to your own personal business or brand, um, you should definitely seek outside counsel, seek separate representation. I'll try to answer any questions that you have to the best of my ability. And if I find that the questions are within reason and I don't feel like they're too much of a legal advice spiel, then I will answer those questions. But just so you know, if you need any further specific help, definitely seek outside counsel. This video is just for educational purposes. With that being said, let's get into the video. Just to make sure I'm giving you the most accurate, specific descriptions as possible, I do have some notes right here. I will be looking at my laptop throughout this video. Hopefully you don't mind. Trademark law. Trademark law refers to a word, a phrase, a symbol, a product shape, a logo, any type of mark by a manufacturer or merchant to identify its own goods and to distinguish their goods from those made by another or sold by another. In trademark law, words, phrases, and symbols, things of that tone are referred to as marks. So in this video, I will be moving on and calling them marks. Brands are able to trademark things like their logo, for example, like the LV monogram, uh, the Gucci B, the Gucci stripes, more on that later. You pretty much have an idea of what a trademark is because that signifies what a brand is. Alien in the room, which <laughs> signifies my own brand. Uh, McDonald's signifies the fast food popular chain that has burgers and Popeyes. All these type of trademarks that you're probably seeing across the screen, all of those logos are all things that are referred to as marks. Marks help protect both the brands and their consumers. It helps to clear up any confusion of whether the goods actually belong to a certain brand, and it helps to ensure that your brand isn't exactly tarnished by someone selling knockoff goods that can be of lesser quality than your own goods. And trademark law not only signifies your brand and defines your brand to consumers, but it also protects your investment and your hard work that you put into making your brand if people attempt to steal your work by naming their product the same name as your product. In the United States, your logo has common law rights merely from you using it and conducting your business or any activity with it in the United States. So Alien the Room, for example, I have this YouTube channel, I have my own website. That would have common law protection from just me using it and putting it out into the universe. But if you would like the greatest protection possible, you should definitely go ahead and register your mark with the government and it could be with the federal government or with your state government federal government obviously is better than registering it with your state government and usually federal trademarks have the r symbol and the unregistered trademarks have tm 
Another interesting thing to note is that you can possibly trademark a color. Famous example of this is the Christian Louboutin Red Sole, that infamous shoe that maybe you have in your closet. And if you do, you're pretty damn lucky. <laughs> you're pretty rich. Christian Louboutin had been making the Red Sole high heels since 1992, and they had registered that Red Sole with the United States Patent and Trademark Office. YSL prepared to market their own monochrome shoes back in 2011, and there were all purple shoes, all green, all yellow, and all red. And that's where the issue lied. The all red shoe would have been entirely red. So Christian Louboutin sued over the fact that they were attempting to use their trademarked red sole. The court determined that Christian Louboutin red sole had acquired the necessary meaning to be a signifier for the Christian Louboutin brand, but they gave them a limited use of that trademark, meaning that the Christian Louboutin red sole is trademarked as long as the outside of the shoe, the remainder of the shoe, is a different color than the red sole. You might also find trademarks in things such as stripes and even color arrangements. Uh, Adidas is a pretty aggressive player in the shoe industry and they're famous for going after anyone who attempts to put three stripes onto any sneaker. They do not like that. <laughs> and even recently, Gucci and Forever 21 got into a big legal battle over the contrasting green, red, green stripe and the blue, red, blue stripe that Gucci is famous for. Where trademark law can become a little bit confusing is when companies use the same mark for two different types of goods. Oftentimes you'll see that different people are using the same mark or I guess the same words or phrases to describe two entirely different products. And a popular example of that is an Apple computer and apples for the type that you eat. The brand itself would have a trademark on the computer industry on anything technology wise, but apples, the ones that you eat, would be trademarked in a different category of food. Copyright law, the area, is concerned with the protection of expressions. And this is not to be confused with the protection of ideas. Now, in everyday normal talk, you're thinking, what's the difference between ideas and expressions? Well, I don't want to go too much into what the difference is, but just for the sake of this video, copyrights are only given to pictorial, graphical, or sculptural works that are fixed and original. And fixed and original is kind of what equates to an expression. Copyright is protecting poetry, novels, movies, songs, computer software, architecture, Sculptural can be the Statue of Liberty. It can be any statue or that you have lying around your house. It can be the, the words that are on your website, things of that nature. But it does not protect ideas, procedures, um, titles, names, short phrases, or slogans. That is more so for trademark law. So let's take a regular book, Harry Potter book. Why not? You get copyright protection for the actual content of the book, not the actual physicality of the book itself, not the idea in your head that, oh yeah, I wanted to write this book about wizards and muggles, crazy made up wizardry world. You actually have to have it written down in a tangible medium. So whether it's a piece of paper, whether it's the voice memos on your phone, Fix is just an easy requirement to kind of get out of the way. It just means that the idea can't just be in your head. People try to suggest copywriting a design in fashion, for example. Often you'll see on social media that fast fashion companies have stolen a smaller artist's design, their t-shirt design. It's really tricky to have any protection for fashion designs in general because the legal atmosphere doesn't necessarily want to protect fashion designs and the cut of a garment. Uh, those things are pretty much open to the public and what you'll find is often that big companies like Gucci and Louis Vuitton and all the big names that you've heard before, Prada, Michael Kors, 
that they're always more concerned about moving on to the next season, the next collection, and they won't waste their time and money on legal fees on someone stealing from their current collection when they're already working on the next one. They just view it as a waste of time and it doesn't really go anywhere. So the fashion world is really like unregulated territory and it's very easy to just copy and steal in the progress of science, in the in the idea of moving society along and giving society the trends that they love. Similar to trademark law, you do have a copyright in your content from the moment that it is fixed on a tangible medium. However, registering your copyright is the best way to maintain some legal protection for whatever you are making. Patent law is divided into three different types of patents. There are utility patents, design patents, and plant patents, which are for new species of plants, <laughs> which might not be useful to anyone watching this video. Utility patent refers to protection of new and useful processes, machines, manufacturers, or composition of matters, or any new and useful improvements of such. The invention must be new, useful, and non-obvious. And again, these terms can be broken down into specific definitions, but for the purposes of this video, we'll leave it as new, useful, useful and non-obvious. Utility patents last for 20 years from the date of filing and they refer to what you typically think a patent is, um, an invention. So it's possibly everywhere around you right now, in your house. It could be your dishwasher, it can be your microwave, it can be your water cooler, um, your cell phone, your camera lens, your diva ring light, all of those things are possible for patent protection. They are technology based, they're a machine, and they can possibly have a unique component that was not thought of in a previous design and can obtain patent registration. Often utility patents applications are often denied for the sake of them not being novel or non-obvious, but it's rare for a design patent to actually be denied for novelty and non-obviousness. Design patents refer to the ornamentality of an object and this is where it can kind of get a little bit blurry with copyright law because copyrights also protect ornamentality as well. But there are key differences. Design patents have to have an element of novelty and non-obviousness that copyright doesn't have to have. Copyright exists automatically when the work is created into a tangible medium, but for design patents, design patents are only available if you register them with the USPTO, which is the United States Patent and Trademark Office. Design patents take a longer time to obtain than copyright. Filing a copyright is a lot cheaper than it is to register a design patent. And design patents only last 15 years from the date of issue. Whereas a copyright lasts the length of your lifetime plus 70 years. Some famous examples of design patents are the Statue of Liberty, as I stated before, the curvy, shape of the coca-cola bottle back in 1915, ornamental designs on jewelry, automobiles, furniture, as well as packaging and fonts and computer icons, stuff of that nature can be designed patentable. So that brings us to the end of this video. Hopefully now you can understand the difference between trademark, copyright and patent. Please do not use them <laughs> interchangeably anymore. Stay tuned for the rest of this series because then we're gonna get a little bit more business specific. Just wanted to go ahead and clear up these legal terms to start off with because I think that we're, out, we're confused out there and young entrepreneurs need to know how to use those terms correctly when you go about conducting your own business. If you have any questions or if you have any video requests, please let me know in the comment section. Your question can be my next video. But until then, stay tuned and I will talk to you guys in the next video. Bye.